The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Cade, and I would like to uh, welcome you guys to our webinar. This is, uh, we, we like to provide you guys with as, as much uh, tools and ammunition to really uh, charge your your practice, your functional medicine practice, or or whatever it is that your goals are in your in your uh, clinic to to really give you some some good content and some good ways that you can attract new patients and um, effectively treat them. So uh, today we're going to be going over reversing brain fog, leaky gut, and thyroid issues, and and Reagan's going to be doing a presentation on that, um, so that you guys can. Um, is uh, you know you can uh, emulate that and and produce that for some of your patients as well to give them good education and also you know the overall goal is to be able to um, you know close more patients and get get new patients in. So I'm going to turn it over to Reagan. Hey everybody, uh, good to have you here. Bright and early. I'm in Hawaii, so I, I woke up early for everybody. So, so plug in your questions. My goal today is to give you some new insights on this brand new presentation. So there's a lot of good topics you can use out there, but one of the biggest things that I hear from my patients is that they have brain fog. How many of you have patients who come in brain fog, fatigue, and you're wondering, you know, what would happen if you were actually to get their brain turned on? I've had patients who have such horrible brain fog when they come in for the report of findings. It's like impossible to close them because they can't focus long enough to actually get them to agree to anything. It almost feels like you're working with an insane person. So, um, so as we're going through this, what I'll do is I'm going to talk about some of the uh, medical concepts of brain fog and then... What I'll also do is show you how to do uh, the close in the dinner lecture. Um, how many of you are doing dinner lectures right now? Um, if you can just plug that in. And if you can plug in the amount of attendees that are typically showing up. Now, now Kate, how many attendees do you have coming to your dinner lecture tomorrow? Um, we should have about 25. Okay. Great. That's awesome. And that's that's the perfect number to have. Um, if you're going to have uh, a dinner lecture that's got more than 25, that's where it can get a little, it can get a little iffy that way. Um, but 25 is a great number because you can still, you can control the amount of interaction that you have. Um, dinner lectures, Reba, I'm getting your question coming through, but yeah, 18 18 to 5, it varies so far. Good. Yeah, well, still, that's that's great. I mean, I've had dinner lectures where I literally had one where we had four people there, and it was one of my Park City events. And the funny thing about that is I walked in there, and I was like, oh, we should have, you know, we, you know, some of these dinner lectures, well, we had 10 that were all confirmed. They were good to go. And we had four people show up. I mean, it was a little snowy, but it's Park City, so you should expect that. But what we had is we ended up having, um, I think, eight people, seven or eight people, actually, is how many patients we got out of that, that event. Because all four people, they each one of them had somebody they wanted to bring. So it ended up being very positive. And um, so don't get bummed out if you have... Um, only a few people show up, but the ideal number is between 20 and 25. But the ideal number is really how many can you tolerate and what do you work with the best? Because, um, because some, some of us, we have 25 and it's, it's miserable. Sherry had one and it was a failure. Um, okay. You had one, you had 11, three signed up. Others wanted a free meal. Um, I think the marketing was wrong and no pre-education, at least no longer even wants to try. Okay. So, uh, Sherry, please have at least watch these webinars. The one we did last week was on autoimmunity and gut health. Um, this one is another good one on reversing brain fog, leaky gut and thyroid issues, because the, the amazing thing about these lectures 
is you're, it's hit or miss. I mean, we do them every single week, and some weeks they're great, some weeks they're not so great. And we find that postcards will work for a minute and then they won't work. We'll find radio will work for a minute and then it doesn't work. So it's basically finding out what marketing avenues uh, you can drive the most people in from. And also, be- also three of eleven for your first time. You know, don't don't beat yourself up. You you'll definitely improve as as uh, you continue to do those too. That's true. Now, how many of those three out of eleven signed up? Because you know, when Reba, when you did yours, Reba, you had, Reba had like nearly 100% close. So that was pretty incredible. But um, even with five, we still closed six. Yes. And that's, that's the thing. Three out of 11, sometimes it's, um, you know, it, it can feel a little devastating. But if you have three of those people sign up for a six month program, that's eighteen thousand dollars, and so I would say that's that's certainly worth your time. Um, but yeah, even just keep doing it. That's what I find is in marketing, it's it's the value that you put out there, and using marketing as a service as a way of giving back to the community is the way I want to look at it because um, you're not marketing to try and do be gimmicky you're marketing out of authenticity and also out of this pure intention that the that you've got answers that people are looking for and when you market from that that energy and when you really put in the the uh yes it, it sounds a little woo woo but you put in that that law of attraction you really you really have the intention and the energy and the presence that that you're going to bring these people answers that they've been looking for for years that's where you can really make an impact and that's when you know you have three people show up or you have three people that close out of 20 which i've had i did a i did a workshop on depression and we had 25 people now this was about six months ago and i closed one person so um Sherry, I wanted to quit doing it too. And for about a week, I told everyone, no, we're not doing these anymore. They don't work. Um, Really what it came down to is I just, I felt like um, I was, I was pretty embarrassed, but um, I don't know why I only closed one. Honestly, it was, um, it was very interesting. Diabetes. That's another one that I, I, uh, I find that, you know, sometimes it's the topic and a lot of times, yeah, it's you, you will have people that come for a free meal. If you think about people coming for a free meal, I mean, um, we, we got to change our mindset at the very beginning and uh, you'll, you'll see, you'll, you'll got, you'll get a lot more people coming higher quality when all throughout the week, you're just focusing on these. So I have a calendar in my office and I write down my financial goals on there. So we have collections for each one of my businesses in clinics. And then I also write down all the marketing avenues that I'm going to do. And so I'd recommend that for you so that in the future, I'm looking at something that, you know, every day I'm just saying, okay, I got to get ready for reversing brain fog, leaky gut and thyroid issues. And that helps a lot. So, okay. So find new avenues and on our marketing side, on the Kajabi, you can all get on there and look at new ways of getting more people to, to out to these events network with the local restaurants. We've been doing a lot of lunch lectures in our office. And last week we had 25 people show up for a lunch lecture, which was pretty darn good. So um, don't get stuck on it having to be the dinner. Okay, so reversing brain fog, leaky gut thyroid issues. How many of you out there have brain fog? How many of you have actually been in your house and walking through different rooms and forgot why you're walking to that room in the first place. So I'm giving you some some examples. So how many of you have heard of leaky gut? Okay, a few of you have. What is it? And then get the audience engaged. And then how many of you are here because you've got thyroid issues tonight? Okay, so there's several of you who have thyroid issues. Now, as we go through this this tonight, what I want to do is is I want to make a couple promises to you. I want to make the first promise I want to make is that I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to give you information that will train you and help you 
understand the way your body works better than anyone has before me. Hopefully by the end of this, this seminar tonight, you'll be wondering why no one has talked to you about this before because you'll be, you'll be so frustrated because you've been struggling with brain fog for so many years, maybe decades for some of you, or you struggle with thyroid issues and no one's given you the answer beyond just take a drug or here's a medication that will mask a symptom. So what my promise is tonight is that I'm not going to I'm not going to take the easy way out and just try to resolve symptoms. What I'm actually going to do is give you real workable solutions that you can take into your life immediately and give you better answers than anyone has before me because how many of you would agree with me that health can be confusing? Now, I look at health and I say, yes, it it can be very confusing if you don't have the right coaching and the right mentoring. So one of the things that we, one of the reasons why we come out and do these events is because we believe that we need better coaching, better mentoring. Of course, we have Google and everything's available at any time, but we can go on, work really hard and move in the wrong direction when it comes to health. So my second promise I'm going to make to you is that you're going to be able to come in to the office for a discounted rate for my consultation and wellness evaluation. Now, this is exclusive to those of you who are in attendance tonight, and it, it is one of the best opportunities you'll get when it comes to finding out if we have the solutions for your particular problem. So all that I ask is if you like this presentation tonight, if you resonate with what I have to say and you and you feel in your heart that that I may have some answers for you, then at the end, what I'm going to do is I'll offer you an opportunity to come to see me and get the answers that you're looking for. So is everyone okay with those promises? So I get the agreement. Yes. Boom. We move on. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about brain fog. Now, brain fog is the inability to... Um, Wait, I forgot what I was going to say, you know, brain, oh, excuse me, brain fog's the inability to focus, right? How did you feel when I went away for a minute there? What did that do to you? Because um, the brain fog, if you have brain fog, it's really hard to be connected in a, in a relationship. You're going to feel like you're, you're alone. You know, if you're, if you're talking to someone with brain fog, it's the most random thing where, mid mid conversation somebody drifts off um my dad was hilarious when i was a kid if the tv was on now this is one reason i don't have a tv in my house because i get distracted but if the tv was on or if my dad was thinking about something he'd be mid sentence and he'd say you know reagan what reagan why don't we go do um and then he'd trail off and it was the most frustrating thing so i would always be like dad quit it but um, brain fog can do the same thing. Distractions can do the same thing. But brain fog is the inability to focus, poor memory functioning, and difficulty learning new things. So how many of you like to read? How many of you remember the pages that you read? Now, I think life is so much about learning and about experiencing new things. And I really have a, a deep appreciation for authors because of the amount of work that goes into books. And I want to appreciate that book. It's, it's, uh, it's an investment of their time. So pretty incredible. Um, Michael Jones, obviously a brain fog. I chose chiropractor over acupuncture. Hey, there's, there's still time, buddy. Um, okay, now here's an interesting thing about brain fog is it does relate to inflammation. Now, if you look at depression, if you look at at hypertension, you look at diabetes, you look at any autoimmune disease in the body, and at its core is inflammation. Now, inflammation is, is the, new, the new disease pattern that we're looking at when it comes to overcoming the number one killer in our country. How many of you know what disease kills more people than any other disease? Yes, that's right, heart disease. Now, heart disease, how do we treat heart disease? How are we trying to prevent it in our country? Yeah, that's right. Lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, decrease stress, eat better, exercise, all those things. Is it working? So far, it's not. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about this today. And, and I'm going to give you something very, very interesting about brain fog and how it relates to heart disease. So, But first of all, 
one thing that we found is if you have brain fog, brain fog almost always is related to inflammation. Inflammation is stemming from leaky gut. So that's where your intestinal lining gets to this, the tight gap junctions open up and you have lipopolysaccharides that leak through. These are toxins. These are endotoxins that come when your gram negative bacteria die. Those endotoxins get released through the intestinal wall and then they be, get into your bloodstream and your immune system does not like them being in there. Um, so leaky gut is a big contributing factor. Thyroid is another thing. Now, how do you feel if your thyroid is not working? We're going to talk more about this tonight, but it robs you of your spark. You know, we all have this cool personality inside of us, but if you're tired and your brain's not working, it's really hard to feel like yourself and it's hard to want to show your personality because frankly, you're just too fucking tired, right? Um, oh, can we uh, edit that out? Um, all right. So healthcare system. What, a, how do we, no problem already done. Thanks. How, how do we, um, in our healthcare system, how do we treat this? Well, one, one thing we've done is we fragment things. And we fragment it into you've got a proctologist, you've got a urologist, you've got an internal medicine doctor, you've got your cardiologist, your neurologist, your pulmonologist. All this fragmentation, what it does is it it's not treating the underlying cause. Now, how many of you are frustrated with the current system of health in our country? Now, why are you frustrated about that? And what could we do different? All right. I think one thing we could do different is maybe change our approach. How many of you have heard of the food pyramid? How many of you followed this? How many of you know that the Obamacare was a very tight-knit way and propaganda to get insurance companies more profits? And yes, they did support the Obama campaign. Now, I don't, I'm not here to talk about politics. I think he's a great person, great president, whatever. But I mean, if you think about this, uh, the way that our health insurance is running, it's it basically it's a fee per service, and you can only bill as a doctor if there is a disease process in place. There's no incentive for your doctor to get to the underlying cause. Actually, there's there's no codes for preventative medicine. So in America, we've got this health crisis and a lot of it is based on this food pyramid because food is not the same food that our grandparents ate or especially our great grandparents. It's a fragmented healthcare system where you've got, you've got several people looking at different symptoms and waiting for the symptoms within that system to get bad enough to where they'll actually do something. Now, how many of you've had labs that show normal after you've gone to your doctor, but you still feel like crap. You still have the brain fog. You still have the issues with digestion or thyroid issues. Your air is falling out. I had a patient who came to me. She was getting two handfuls of hair that was falling out every day. She's 82. She came to me and she showed me how much hair fell out that morning because she wanted me to take her serious. She said, no doctor will take me serious. They just tell me it's my age. I want my hair. I've got a long, I've got a lot of years ahead of me. My parents both lived to over a hundred. So guess what we did? We ran some tests for her and we found out it was her antibodies on her thyroid that were depleting her, her hormones and her hair was falling out. So what we did is we, we fixed her thyroid, we fixed her gut and now her hair looks beautiful. So it just takes a little bit of time of digging into the underlying cause. So how about us? Could we have better habits? A lot of us are not being proactive, so make sure you're you're not walking your dog like this. Prescription drugs, I don't know if you're aware of this, but every year prescription drugs that are properly prescribed are causing over 128,000 deaths in the United States and over 200,000 deaths in Europe. Now, how much money are these pharmaceutical companies making? I mean, it's a billion dollar industry. And so you have two choices when it comes to your health right now, and that can be, well, I can take a medication or I can try and do this on my own. Now, how many of you out there are doing this on your own? Right. And how many of you would rather have a doctor who actually took the time to understand what your needs are 
and then met those needs for more of a natural approach. All right, so, okay, so I'm going to pause real quick here. Um, you guys know this. I'm going to, I'm gonna, just going to pause. Any questions that you have so far about, okay, this is a pop quiz for all you geniuses um, listening right now. Um, how do you, what, what is the purpose of me asking all these questions right now? What is this calling that I'm doing? What do we call this in a, in sales terms? Any idea? So this is, this is what we call framing. So first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating, um, you know, I'm creating a relationship with them. Hopefully I had a great introduction. Somebody came up there and just, and explained everything about me. Usually at this stage of the presentation, once I've been able to gauge the energy of the audience, that's when I'll jump into, you know, and this is how I got into um, holistic medicine. I mean, I was the annoying student at the University of Utah. I just, I wanted to be a doctor, internal medicine, something, and I just, it didn't fit with me. And one of my professors noticed this and gave me some mentorship and guidance. But um, what we're doing right now is framing the conversation so that people have two choices. One choice is they can keep doing things the same, which is very dangerous and very expensive, and it's not working in our country, and, and several studies prove that. Or they can do something different and come to see me or come to see you or at least um, start thinking about doing something different. So, um, so that's called framing. So make sure that you have a very tight frame. You want to make sure that you're controlling – the the energy in the room where where you're getting them engaged in thinking about health differently so that's the whole purpose of the frame does that make sense to everybody okay um, hey reagan on that so so were you framing um you pretty much just throw aside the prescription drugs um and then you the the real frame is either you're on your own or you have you know a doctor that's looking for natural solutions for you Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and, you know, you're framing also that, um, you know, you're drawing the line in the sand either. We've got, we've got the current system right now and the current system is doing nothing for your symptoms because you've got them to the emotional level. That's how you really get someone engaged is get to the emotions. How's your brain fog affecting you? Is anyone frustrated by this? And then that's, that's step one in the frame. And then step two is saying, you know, here's the problem, and step three is here's the solution. Cool. Very All right. Um, Death by Medicine. You guys have heard me talk about this book. Very powerful. Um, okay. So here's something interesting. Now, how many of you are on uh, on cholesterol lowering medications, or know somebody who's on cholesterol lowering medications? So. I always have to throw in or know somebody because I find if I just say how many of you are on cholesterol medications, nobody wants to raise their hand and feel like that that guy. So, um, you know, one thing you can try is say how many of you know somebody um, who are, who is on cholesterol lowering medication. So, and then you know how to go through this slide. But here's the interesting thing: you know, this is how pharmaceutical companies deceive us. Here's what we're trying to do for heart disease. Here's the biggest issue. There's, there's research that was done by doctors Bowden and Sinatra, and what they showed is that cholesterol-lowering drugs, their, their hypothesis is it might just be the single worst group of drugs for your brain. Now, how many of you think that's good news, right? How many people in America are on statin-lowering drugs? You know, for over a decade, this drug was the number one bestseller on the market. Right now, there's only one other drug that is outperforming statins in cells, and that is Synthroid. So the, that's, you know, the interesting thing about this is the biggest, the most common number one side effect from medication is fatigue. But what the research is showing with statin drugs is that it does cause brain fog. Now, memory loss is now required. The FDA required it to be listed on the label as a potential side effect. 
one quarter of your brain is composed of cholesterol. Now, if you, if you think about it, cholesterol, you'll need it for memory, for learning, for fast thinking. It's also needed to make neurotransmitters. Now, these are neurotransmitters like dopamine, dopamine epinephrine, norepinephrine. Those are neurotransmitters that really light your brain up and get you feeling good. That's one reason we all like a little bit of coffee, because coffee has some naturally occurring dopamine in it um, and epinephrine. So uh, your neurotransmitters, if they aren't working, it's it's like having static in your cell phone. It's not going to work. Your brain, your cells won't communicate with each other, and you're going to forget what you're doing. You're going to be driving down the road, and brain fog sets in. Um, statins have been pushed on the public because they're most, among the most profitable prescription drugs in the world. They're easy to make. They're cheap. And in the United States, we've paid an average of 12 times more for our cholesterol-lowering drugs than in other places in the world. One in two senior men and one in three senior women are taking these drugs. That's crazy. And if you look at, if you read anything about the former CEO of Merck, he wanted everybody on statin-lowering drugs. They were doing so much research to prove that statins had preventative effects and actually could decrease dementia and decrease Alzheimer's. And through that research, there are some whistleblowers that found that actually it was the opposite. It was actually causing more dementia. So you need all kinds of cholesterol. Your low-density lipoproteins, what they do is they actually carry nutrition through the blood-brain barrier, and they fuel your brain. Because remember, a quarter of your brain is composed of cholesterol. If you want to make good sex hormones, you're going to need cholesterol. And cholesterol is what repairs your arterial lining. So if you have too much inflammation, one of the things that your liver will do is your liver will actually make more cholesterol. Now, where do we get most of our cholesterol from? This is just a quick pop quiz. From food, or do we get it from our own body? That's right, our own body. So... Three causes, three types of stress that cause inflammation. So inflammation is that big killer. If you have high cholesterol, that's not a good thing too because we know that's one of the signs that you have too high levels of, of inflammation. So there's another marker that we look at in your labs and that's called the C-reactive protein or we can look at homocysteine levels. And there's, there's three types of stress. How many of you have too much stress and then Everybody on this webinar knows how to go through this. The, uh, the biggest area that starts the inflammatory process is eating, eating your food. And certain foods, certain substances, stress, there's things that cause leaky gut. So let's talk about leaky gut a little bit because I think as, as we look at more of the research, we, we start understanding how your, your, genet your genes work. We understand how nutrition and foods affect the body and, and pharmaceuticals, what we're finding is that if you don't have good integrity in your intestinal lining, you are going to have more inflammation in your body. And the more inflammation you have, the more likely you will be to have chronic disease. Now, is a little bit of inflammation good? Yeah, absolutely. If you twist an ankle, if you have an acute injury and you don't have inflammation, you're going to have a very hard time healing. So what causes inflammation? Stress can cause it. Stress dysregulates a hormone called cortisol. Stress can also create more of a sympathetic nervous system response. Now, if you're a chiropractor, you can explain this really, really well, right, Dr. Jones? But a sympathetic nervous response is where your body gets put into fight or flight. And so your parasympathetic nervous system gets turned off and therefore you have less nerve interaction in your gut. You'll actually have less peristalsis. You'll have less digestive enzymes being secreted. And that's going to cause a big problem because when you eat your food, what you want to do is first of all, chew your food really well. The saliva, you have amylase, which is an enzyme in your saliva, which helps you start to break down foods. As the food hits your stomach, you have more enzymes in there and you have this cool, this cool acid called hydrochloric acid that really helps break down more of the proteins and more of the carbohydrates. And if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, then you're going to have bloating, you're going to have food that, that putrefies in your stomach and that can cause bad breath, it can cause a whole host of issues. But once that food moves into the small intestine and if it's not properly digested, 
that's when you can start getting this inflammation in your intestinal wall. And that inflammation, what happens is if the food's not properly digested, then pathogenic bacteria can start to grow. And those bacteria will kill out the good bacteria right when they hit the large intestine. And that bacteria, what will happen is as, as the bacteria die, there's, there's this, this little molecule that sits on top of the bacteria, and it's called an endotoxin. It's called lipopolysaccharide. And once that lipopolysaccharide starts to leak into your body, not only does that lipopolysaccharide turn on your immune system because your immune system sees that as a direct threat, but lipopolysaccharides actually block the conversion of T4 into T3, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if you have too high levels of LPS, your thyroid will not work. Now, what, what are some of the causes of this leaky gut? So it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's really bad because not only will it turn off your thyroid hormones, but it's also going to cause uh, an immune reaction. So some of the biggest foods that we found are gluten. We found that soy can do this, corn. We found sugar to be a big culprit. Dairy is another one, and peanuts. So those are some foods. Some of the drugs, the NSAIDs, the ibuprofen, acetaminophen, those are the worst for your intestinal lining. And then if you have yeast overgrowth, yeast, yeast pathogens, that's going to be another contributing factor. And then your organs, if your liver is not functioning right and you're not converting your, your, your toxins, your fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble, your body is not going to feel good. You're going to end up with far too much leaky gut. So um, leaky gut is, is causing a whole host of reactions. It can cause rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, headaches. How many of you get headaches in here? How about sinus and mouth issues? How many of you have too much depression or anxiety? These can all these have all been traced back to leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So gluten. How many of you are gluten free out there? Um, I know a lot of you are. I find I can I can handle gluten maybe once a week, a little bit here and there, but that's about it. Otherwise, I get brain fog. Now, one way of testing. Uh, to find out if gluten could be one of the contributing factors of your brain fog is to eat gluten and nothing else and then see how your brain does. Now, sometimes the brain fog won't show up for 24 to 48 hours. So don't expect it to show up immediately. You eat bread and you're like, man, I felt great. That's because you had this nice little rush of morphine because uh, you're, you're, you're stimulating those same receptor sites. Now, gluten is, is like eating a ball of hair. It's the same texture and very hard for our digestive systems to break down. So um, if you want to do an experiment with gluten, see if it causes brain fog. Most of my patients, it does. Let's talk a little bit about neurotransmitters. How many of you have heard of serotonin? Now, what does serotonin help us feel like? Right? It helps us feel good. We feel more relaxed. We feel more peaceful. Now, how about dopamine? Dopamine is that neurotransmitter that helps us. It's a reward center. So you finish a project, you fin you you check something off your to do list, boom, you get a you get a nice little reward that kicks in. Um, you're doing something that's mentally stimulating, and boom, you're going to get more dopamine. Um, all these all these neurotransmitters, what they do is is they create connectivity in our brains. And so the more connectivity that you've got, the better your brain will function, the better you'll feel. So how do we test neurotransmitters? And who in here has had their doctor test them for neurotransmitters? Now they're, okay, so nobody has. Okay, so one of the, it's one of the simplest tests we do. We just send you home with a, uh, a kit and then you collect a little bit of your urine. You send it to the lab and they'll tell you what neurotransmitters you've got off. They'll look at GABA. They'll be looking at your acetylcholine, your, your dopamine, your anandamide, your serotonin. All these neurotransmitters can be balanced naturally. You don't have to balance it through drugs. And it's pretty amazing how well you'll feel. When I, had, when I got my neurotransmitters balanced, I was like, man, I wish I had this in college. I would have learned so much faster. But, um, of course, you know, it's, it's neurotechnology. But what we found is that your brain, what it does is if you have the right amount of neurotransmitters and if you're putting yourself in situations 
that cause your brain to fire a little different, cause your brain to work a little, little harder in certain cases and a little easier in some, then that's how you get into what's, what some call the flow state. Now, how many of you have done an activity that you just love? And, you know, think, think of that time where you just, you sat, you, you just sit back for a second. Think about that time where you, time stood still. You, you're in a conversation with somebody that's very engaging. And what happens is you, you look at the clock and all of a sudden, you know, you started talking at seven and it's, it's two in the morning. You know, or how many of you have been reading a book and you're so engaged by it, you just, you couldn't leave, or you're in a movie and you felt like you're, you're at one with the movie. Um, watch The Conjuring, it will do that to you. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen that, but it's, that show's scary as hell. All right, um, so if we're looking at this, so we look at struggle. So struggle is when your brain waves these brain waves, you're looking at 16 cycles per second. And that's when your brain is really, it's stressed. And that's when you're getting more cortisol released and norepinephrine. Once you can make it through that initial struggle, that's when your brain actually gets a release. So interestingly enough, when brain fog is showing up, your brain is going to have more beta waves showing up. It's going to be in struggle mode because it's not, it's not even processing anything. So the irony of how your brain works is your brain, the more you can slow it down, the the smarter you become, the more you can process, the better you're going to feel about life. So um, once the struggle, once you get to overcome that, the release happen, happens and then you get these alpha brain waves and nitric oxide gets secreted. And that's when you start to feel like, okay, now I can move through my day. I can I can actually start experiencing things with low stress and I can be productive. You're still in the, in the, when the alpha brain waves get released, yes, you're still, you're still moving, you're still doing things. And then this is where it gets really cool is when the theta and the alpha brain waves meet together. That's when your, your, your brain goes from, you know, eight cycles per second to four cycles per second. And that's when you get dopamine, endorphins, and andamide. Now, how many of you have heard of endorphins? Now, who gets endorphins? The runners, right? The runners high. That's why people like to exercise. I love this stuff because they get the nice relief of endor release of endorphins. And this is where flow state happens. And that release and flow, this is why you want to have things that are challenging, but they're also novel. They're not too challenging. They don't stress you out. They don't put you in the beta brain waves. But they keep you in this nice theta and alpha state where you're creative. You're using both your left and right hemispheres of your brain. This is the best place to write from. This is the best place to create. And then if you're in those states more often, if you can, you can get in these states easier if you have the right neurotransmitters. You can do that through supplementation. Acupuncture is a great way of getting neurotransmitters balanced in your body. Chiropractic care um, is another great way of, of getting things there. And then finally, when you're recovering, you'll get into delta waves much quicker. Humans, we're, the only, we're, we're like the only mammal that stays in delta wave as long as we do. Because if you look at a dog, a dog sleeping 12, 13, 14 hours a day, cats are like 15 hours. That's because they can't drop into these delta brain waves. So very powerful to balance your neurotransmitters. Some of the issues that you're going to have, if you don't balance your neurotransmitters, you're going to have more depression. Now depression, what we've found is it's not a chemical imbalance necessarily. It's more of an inflammatory symptom. This inflammation, interestingly enough, the inflammation in your gut, remember we talked about leaky gut is where all this inflammation stems from. That inflammation is part of what's blocking your bacteria's ability to make uh, serotonin. So depression is a big thing. Nervous and emotional. Once again, if you don't have the right levels of dopamine, um, you're going to stay stuck in that cortisol mode. And that's going to cause anxiety. And so bacteria in your gut are making at least 70% of the dopamine, 90% of serotonin. Headaches. If you're getting headaches frequently, this is a sign of inflammation. And if you've got too much inflammation, then your body's more prone to develop autoimmunity. All right, now a lot of you raised your hand when I asked, how many of you have had tests that show normal, but you still feel sick? Now this is a big thing here, because 
All right, I'm going to pause real quick before we jump into this. I want to make sure this this is a, a monologue, but I want to, can we unmute everyone? Does anyone have any questions as we're going through this? But hopefully what you'll, what you'll see is uh, I'm obviously a big believer in showing value and training people about how their bodies work. Because remember, people who reach out to you about these events, they really want to see um, some solutions. They want to see that you know what you're talking about. So I try and present. Muted. Unmuted. Hi, Reagan. I, I muted you there. I was trying to unmute everybody else. Oops, my bad. <laughs> All right. Anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Everyone should be unmuted, so if, if you have questions, comments, anything, uh, okay. Uh, Bueller. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Muted. Unmuted. All right, you're up. Okay, so yeah, it's really important that you've you've given them valuable content so hopefully by now you you'll see wow this there's a lot of cool stuff about neurotransmitters I had no idea I didn't know about leaky gut I I didn't know my lab test could be normal from a, a doctor's perspective or the labs ranges but I'm still sick because they're not looking at it from a functional range so then you'd explain this slide okay let's talk about thyroid so if they don't, if there's not very many people in the room who raise their hand when I say, how many of you have thyroid issues? You know, I'll ask again. So a few of you raise your hand on thyroid. So I want to dig in. How, so how many of you have thyroid issues in here or would like to have better metabolism? Okay, great. Well, let's talk about this. Then you'd go through and explain exactly how the thyroid functions. And all of you know exactly how this thing, how it functions. Here's some thyroid symptoms, cold hands and cold feet. One of the things with thyroid and inflammation is being tired and sluggish, having hair loss, hair thinning, constipation, weight gain. Now, how many of you out there are here because you want your thyroid fixed so that you can lose some weight? Well, interestingly, when I look at brain fog and when I started to do the research for this topic for you tonight, what I found is that most people make the worst choices when they have brain fog. Because what are we typically looking for when it comes to food to help get us out of that brain fog moment? That's right. You're looking for something sweet. You're looking for caffeine. You're looking for a stimulant, something to pull you out of this, this brain fog. And unfortunately, that's one of the, the first things that starts to show up when people make poor lifestyle changes. And then you can start putting on weight. But what we found is that there's four different body types. So there's an adrenal body type where you'll put weight on the lower belly. There's an ovary or prostate body type. Now this is this comes from an estrogen dominance where you'll put weight on your, your hips and your thighs. The thyroid, if your thyroid's out of balance, you're going to put weight around your your whole body. And then finally, the liver body type is is where you get the pot belly and all your weight will accumulate and look like you swallowed a bowling ball. Uh, mood swings. These are hormonal issues. So the the biggest thing that we're looking at when it comes to brain fog, when we're coming, when it comes to leaky gut, and it comes to overcoming any types of um, thyroid issues, is we want to really look at the whole picture, because a lot of you have had drugs thrown at you. You've had prescriptions. You you've been told. Um, you know, to, to just give it time or it's your age or, you know, this is normal. It's not normal to have brain fog. It's not normal to, to not have your digestive system working. It's not normal to have thyroid imbalances, even though a big chunk of Americans have some type of thyroid issue. So here's how we look at the body. And this is how we get the success that we do in our program. And then this is a good time to play a testimonial. You've already played one in the beginning. Um, Use, use the whiteboard explainer video that we made in your presentation. Um, it helps a ton. It's, it's a really good resource for you. Um, or make, a, make your own. 
But here's, here's what we found. We find that in order for you to be successful in finding the correct answers and digging into the underlying cause, first thing we have to do is support your detoxification enzyme pathways. Now that means we want to look at your liver. We may want to look at a specific test called your MTHFR. Now write this down, MTHFR. I want you guys to look this test up because it's provided invaluable information and knowledge for so many of our patients because it helps us understand how well their bodies detox. We identify food sensitivities. So we want to look at, we do it through hair, but we look at 300 food sensitivities. We also test and monitor for environmental sensitivities. And then we look at 82 imbalances in nutrition from that single test. We wanna look at hormonal imbalances. If your adrenals aren't working right, if your thyroid's not working properly, you're not going to have your health. You still will have brain fog. If your thyroid's not turned on, your mitochondria are getting no energy into their brain. And so you're going to be, your, your computer is going to be on sleep. So we want to identify these hormonal imbalances. We don't do this through blood typically. However we can, there's antibodies that we want to test from your blood. But we typically will test your adrenals through a simple saliva test where you collect saliva over four different times throughout the day. We're, we want to see if you've got an infection, if you've got yeast, fungus, parasites. We say we want to get the scoop on your poop. That's what my one of my... Uh, my teachers used to, my gastroenterologist uh, training, he's, he's saying, let's get the scoop on your poop. And so the biggest thing about this is if we can understand the ratio of, of good bacteria to bad bacteria that we've, you've got, if you've got yeast overgrowth or a parasite in your gut, we want to resolve that infection. Otherwise, you're going to have more inflammation. We want to find out if you've got, got dysbiosis. Now, dysbiosis is just a fancy word for an imbalance of all the healthy bacteria in your gut. Your gut's like a jungle, and so that's a way of saying that your jungle is disturbed. We want to look at diet changes. You know, what are you eating that's contributing to these problems? And then what vitamins are you depleted in? And then we want to correct inflammation. One of the, the best ways of correcting inflammation is by finding out what the cause is of these multiple issues in your body. But you can also take ginger and turmeric. Those are great things to take on a regular basis when it comes to correcting inflammation. You want to be eating about a pound of vegetables a day, lots of leafy greens. You want to make sure that you know where your meat source from, get plenty of good fresh fish, and then you want to eliminate leaky gut and restore your gut barriers. All these things are what we found to lead to massive amounts of success. So how many of you would say I've kept my promise today? Have I? Um, did I give you... Did I give you the training you hoped for? Did I give you some new solutions when it comes to um, finding out why you have brain fog and thyroid issues and leaky gut? And okay, good. Now, what was the second promise I made? All right, all right. So, do you do you mind? Is everyone okay if I talk to you about our program a little bit and how we address health? And then wait until you get a group agreement here. This is this is the most important most important most important part of your transition is the getting help part now go through five pillars of health and we talked about those last week so review that but as you're going into this transition you want to make sure that people are ready for a new approach so there's there's a few things that we want to do so, Reagan, can you restate that question one more time which question? The the most important. So, is it okay oh. if we can? Yes, the most important question that you want to ask is: Is everybody okay if I talk about our program and how we get the results that we do in our clinic? Question mark or how we help people get to the underlying cause. You can word it however you want, but you want to get everyone the agreement that you're going to offer them something or sell them something. So this is where I'm going to talk about the, this is where you want to set the frame. Because once again, you've already framed that you get, you, you've established yourself that yes, there's a big problem. You've got the solution. You've established yourself as the expert. And now you're putting them in the frame that, okay, now can I offer you something? Because at this point, they should be at the edge of their seats wanting you to sell them something. 
And even it, you'll see the people who are in the audience who are what we call mouth breathers who are checked out. And don't look at these people during this time. It will completely kill your energy. Or you have that, that obnoxious person who takes the phone call right when you go into your clothes. It's the worst when somebody is like super disruptive or they just, they have to answer questions. And so the biggest thing you want to ask them is, yes, can I sell you something? That's essentially what you're asking them here. Don't ask them like that. That's tacky, but in a, in a, in a very elaborate way. Do you mind if I talk to you about our program, how we get the results we do, and then I'll show you wh how you can come and get help from us and then jump into five pillars. Okay, so here's why our approach is unique. We don't make you beg to get the right test ran. We actually, we order the tests that are necessary to understand how well your body's functioning and where your imbalances are because our testing focuses in on the causes. And then we provide the right treatments. That could be herbal medicine, that can be nutrition, that can be acupuncture, chiropractic care. We offer the right treatments because your body needs the correct environment to heal with. And so our treatments provide that. These are natural-based treatments. And then we teach you. How many of you have had a good teacher? Okay. What can a good teacher do for you? Yeah, a good teacher can help. I mean, you can progress 10 times faster if you have a good teacher, somebody who helps you understand concepts, somebody who helps you understand why you're doing the things you're doing, why, why you need um, to, to go to bed or why your body's functioning the way it is. But teaching is one of the most important things. So we actually take you through classes. So there's one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. And then there's groups where you'll meet together with lots of people and you'll be able to attend our classes. And then you get treatments that are are done one-on-one. -on -one. And then it's a systematic, a step-by-step -step training. So we don't let you skip steps. That's why we have patients who are as young as four and as old as, as like my patient Noma, who's 94. So these patients all do very well because they don't skip steps. So as long as you're willing to do some of the things we ask you to do and not do some of the things we ask you not to do, there's no reason why you won't get the results that everyone before you has. We provide mentoring and accountability. So this is what coaching is all about. It's about, you know, being your friend, your guide, but also more importantly, being somebody who holds you to the fire. You know, you make a commitment and we want to make sure that you keep that commitment because our purpose, once again, is, is not just to help you get results today. And you'll find in our paperwork, we're going to ask you some very interesting questions, some questions that you're probably wondering why has nobody asked me these questions before? One of those questions is actually, where do you see yourself three years from now? Where would you like to be for you to be happy with your progress and happy with your health three years from now? And we want you to write that out in detail because once again, we don't want you dependent on us, dependent on a medication or anyone else when it comes to your health. And then finally, there's classes and homework. So yes, you're going to have to study. This is an important part of you getting healthy is you learning how to take care of your own, own health. So here's the questions. How would life be if I were able to turn on my brain again and have more energy and correct my health issues? How has it been affected so far? I mean, we talked about how your brain can impact the the relationships in your life and your ability to work, your ability to focus and enjoy life. And then on a scale of 1 to 10, how motiva motivated am I really to take care of my problem? Because I find this is the number one thing. Um, I'm, I'm writing a book. It's called The Health Passion. And the, the number one spark for you and what I found with everyone I worked with, if they are passionate about their health, even if they're passionate about getting out of pain, it happens. They make it happen. They, they, they do the work necessary to get to the underlying cause. So ask yourself that question, how motivated am I really to, to get on top of things? And then get a mentor. If you feel like, yes, I, I want help, then we take A students, we take B students, we don't take C students. So um, if you can be an A or a B student, we'll get you the help you need. So we get you involved in your care. So you've got two choices. One is you can continue doing the same thing, hoping for different results, which is the definition of, of course, insanity, or you can do something different. Now, I told you I'd give you an opportunity for those of you. This is exclusive for those of you here tonight. Now, what we do offer as well is, is if you'd like to bring in uh, maybe a friend, 
a coworker, a family member, then um, you can bring them to this evaluation too. So you mind if I talk to you about the, the cost of that? Um, now here's, here's what this complete wellness evaluation, it's a consultation wellness evaluation and plan of action. Now, the cost is $87 for you. If you have a spouse or family members, it's just $47. Now, what you get for this is invaluable. You're actually going to get uh, an hour of our time. You're gonna, we're going to take the time necessary to get to the underlying cause. We're going to figure out exactly what's going on in, in your health, in your body. And we're going to figure out what's the best next step for you in, as far as getting things recovered. So through this consultation and evaluation, we'll be able to determine what labs we need to run. We're going to be able to determine what's been contributing to your health decrease or your brain fog, or thyroid issues, whatever you've got. And we'll also be able to help you understand exactly what steps need to be taken and what the overall program will look like when it comes to your health. So please bring your, your, your support person. I do have a few rules. Bring labs that you've had ran in the last six months because this visit could be the most valuable visit of your life. Now, we, what we do at these events is we block out. We, we only have a few appointment spots left. We try and block out enough so that each one of you can take an appointment spot in the next two weeks. All that we ask is that you, you sign up for this appointment and you show up on time because we block a lot of our time out for you. And so be on time. What we're going to do is go around the room and we'll first take your payment and then we'll come back and get things scheduled. It can take a while to get people scheduled. So your dinner is going to be coming. So please be patient with us. But um, please think about a, a day and a time that would work best for you um, as, as you're filling out this form. So thank you for being here. All right, everybody. And that's that's it. That that wraps it up. There's a few extra things I would do if depending on the en energy of the audience. But if you go through that overall flow, you make it into your own story, your own words, use testimonials. Um, you will you'll find that, yes, you may have events where you don't close anybody. You'll have events where you close a lot. And it's fine. Just keep doing it. Because remember, it's a universal principle. When you put energy out, it always comes back. It's a boomerang effect. So don't diminish that energy coming back by being negative about it. Don't block it. Just be very grateful that you had the opportunity to share it with 25 people. Your, your message, your story, what you're passionate about. But if nobody signs up, don't feel guilty. Don't do what I did on my depression when I got depressed and thought it's not working. I'm not doing it again because this will keep you more passionate about your work better than anything else I've seen. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, Kate and I are around to uh, help out with any specific needs that you've got. Um, you can feel free to, to uh, call or, or text us or, you know, it's nice to have the group interaction. So um, I'm going to unmute everyone, but I also wanted to answer a few questions that just came in. So we have one of the questions, uh, I think that was Sherry, who asked if we um, feed them before or after um, or during. So we, you definitely want to feed them after because if they're eating while you're presenting, it's really distracting for you and it's also... Um, they're, they're not going to be as uh, engaged. And then also, as soon as you're done, like you'll notice, you know, half the audience will just get up and leave because they just got their dinner and and they're ready to get out of there. So it kind of forces them to sit down and and think about actually making a decision of of doing something different. So you want to do the dinner totally separate. Have it come out about five minutes after you're finished, five to ten minutes. So that gives you enough time or your staff to go around and. Um, you know, get collect payment, and they can be thinking about what time they want to schedule and everything. Yeah, I and think I, that definitely made a difference. <laughs> yeah, that'll make a huge difference. So you, they were eating while you were presenting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that'll make a huge difference. Yeah, and and I find too when uh, sometimes a restaurant will mess up and they bring their food out. And I see people who are so captivated by, you know, they just, they're there to learn and they're so captivated by it 
that they just leave their food. They don't even eat. And they're like annoyed with the people around them who are eating because it's loud. So yeah, that's a buzzkill for sure. This is Reba. Um, I'm wondering when you do uh, dinner lectures or lunch lectures at your clinic and you get food from Whole Foods, what kinds of um, what kinds of things do you feed them? Um, you know, Reba, um, and good to hear from you guys. Um, we actually just get them uh, chicken skewers is what we've been doing, and so we get a whole big thing of chicken skewers, and then we have salad. And that's it. And we have water. We just keep it very simple because what I found is that people are really, um, they're not coming for the food. Um, we, we can maybe get uh, two or three more people to come out when we do it at a restaurant, but um, we don't want those people anyways. Right. Perfect. We usually put like lime slices or cucumber slices or something in the water to make it pretty, but that's all we've been doing too. <laughs> Good. Nice. Cool. Anyone else have any other questions or? Okay. Well, um, this, this brain fog, we'll try and get this uploaded on Kajabi and you guys are welcome to use it. If you'd like, um, if you'd like this, this, uh, presentation, or if you want to try something new, um, then go for it. It's, uh, it's already our latent event. Our latent clinic is the first clinic to do this one next week and they filled up their event. So, um, it looks like it's a pretty hot topic. Yeah, just to give you guys some updates on Kajabi, I spent a ton of time this weekend and even yesterday uploading uh, a ton of stuff. So you have um, a lot of new PowerPoints that you can use. You got the gut bugs and belly fat. Um, there's an example that Reagan's done, as well as there's there's a couple others. Um, is that us or? I don't know. I, I like the music. <laughs> it's a good touch. Anyway, so uh, take take advantage. That's that's my cue to leave. <laughs> you guys have a great one. All right, take care, everybody. Aloha.